Okay, um, looking at other uh, applications of um, cryptography in in various areas. I mean, we're going to be talking in um, telecommunications security, uh, what we do about uh, the web and all the work that we do on the web. Um, the uh, uh, secure sockets layer SSL or, or transport layer security as um, it's it's now much more widely used um, that uh, is an application of again the the hybrid encryption of uh, using asymmetric for uh, securing the key and then uh, symmetric uh, for uh, providing the actual uh, confidentiality of, of the communications. Um, and uh, we'll uh, talk also about IPsec um, and I, again uh, a system there um, fairly uh, intense uh, in terms of requirements for calculation. Um, but it provides um, both uh, security and authentication and, and multiple layers of authentication if you, if you want that. Um, so it's uh, uh, something we'll look at, as I say, in telecommunications. Um, and we talked already about uh, Kerberos in access control. Uh, it's, it's sometimes pretty hard to separate the different uh, topics cleanly because you, you do get, uh, you know, these things that uh, appear in, in one of the domains and uh, another one. Anyway, um, so <coughs> we've, we've discussed that now. Um, just, uh, again, sort of cleaning up here. Um, cryptography management. Um, you've got to provide the awareness and training to people who are managing your uh, cryptography um, encryption services, uh, whatever functions you are using them for. Uh, make sure that they have the, the training on that, the understanding. Choose the right products, the, the proper technologies, and implement them in the correct ways. Um, conduct uh, risk analysis, going right back to security management, in, in justifying uh, your use of, of these functions. Um, and, uh, you know, keep abreast of new developments in uh, cryptography technology. Um, as I say, you know, we've, we've touched on uh, things like the, the use of quantum computers and whether or not they are going to uh, obviate certain uh, algorithms. Um, you know, be aware of, of the developments in that area and, and do you need to change uh, your basic technologies in, in some of those areas. Um, some additional applications, uh, particularly in the areas of finance. Uh, this, oh, it gets messy pretty quickly. Um, I, uh, back in the day, studied digital cash, and, and uh, there is actual work on actual digital cash and, and uh, trying to have the anonymity of digital cash, um, prevent uh, duplicate spending, um, replay attacks, you know, those sorts of things um, that we uh, think about with regard uh, to financial transactions and business transactions um, when we're dealing with this. Unfortunately, I, all of that research, um, and, and some of it was fairly sophisticated, uh, took a backseat to cryptocurrency. As soon as Bitcoin came along, um, everybody went herring off after that. And I, I, you know, the, the actual digital cash research and technologies that were done 
um, they they were pursuing solid, reliable uh, means of, of providing for those functions uh, on a secure basis um, and understanding exactly how secure. Uh, Satoshi um, really did everybody a disservice because in uh, promoting Bitcoin and the magical blockchain, um, he, uh, well, basically it's cheating. Uh, and cheaters never prosper, ultimately. They're, you know, your, your problems will find you out. Um, the, you know, blockchain is not a technology, it's a mix of technologies, a uh, distributed ledger, um, and, uh, a bit of digital signing, but how much digital signing, how strong is the digital signing, um, are there any, uh, interesting quirks in this, for example, in Bitcoin, and, and this may be a, a fairly, uh, unlikely scenario, but if somebody holds 51% of Bitcoin, basically they have the ability to do whatever they want with the currency. Um, they can void transactions, they can edit transactions, they can, uh, you know, do all kinds of things. And, and you know, basically they, they will have uh, control of the entire currency system. Um, now, as I say, you know, that's unlikely to happen now, um, but it does indicate a, a definite weakness in the system and in the system of cryptography as a whole, because it isn't specified exactly how secure, um, you have to be. And, uh, anyways, I, I have uh, gone into this in, in great detail in a, a different presentation, a series of articles. But um, uh, cryptocurrency at the moment is still very speculative. I, I know that people are um, looking at uh, cryptocurrency and um, you know digital forms of transaction getting uh, and decentralized finance getting away from um, the existing banking systems that have basically a, uh, a stranglehold on, on finance and are using that control to maintain their control. Um, but the, um, it's, it, you know, it, finance and commerce is an incredibly complicated field, even when we're thinking about cryptography. And, um, make sure that you're not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. You know, I, yes, the current system has definite problems, but is uh, another one that you may favor um, able to handle all of the requirements of a full commercial system. Um, so we, you know, there's all kinds of areas of finance that we have to address if we are doing that. And blockchain is not the answer. Uh, so, you know, things like non-fungible tokens, um, that's <laughs> kind of a cross between art and speculation, uh, or maybe it's just the speculation without the art. Uh, kind of interesting, but anyways. Uh, so that, you know, there, there are things, and, and maybe they're cute, but, you know, are they really, um, of use to us and you need to understand the basics of cryptology in order to make assessments of these things and not just be sold a bill of goods.